Hunter S. Thompson once advised, every now and then, when life gets complicated and the weasels start closing in, the only cure is to load up on heinous chemicals and then drive like a bastard from Hollywood to Las Vegas. Well, thankfully, Virgin Atlantic takes you to the world's neon playground in a little more considered manner. Flying direct from Gatwick and Manchester, our crews are ready and waiting should you need a little something, like an antihistamine for your allergies. So sit back, stock up, and enjoy our guide to Vegas. You're gonna have a blast, baby. The city Thompson once feared and loathed is barely recognizable today an absurd testament to excess in the middle of the Mojave Desert. A constant Vegas cliche is that it's always changing. Today, there's somewhat more to indulge in than all-you-can-eat buffets and Celine Dion matinees, though her heart still goes on if that's your thing. Celebrity chefs now pepper architect designed super hotels and their boutique offshoots. Truly credible bands and DJs pack in pool party day clubs for rich 20-somethings you'll either want or want to be. Even the once deserted downtown is regenerating with youthful energy, buoyed by the burgeoning art scene, buzzing cocktail culture, and some twisted takes on the town's seedy history. Whatever you're after, Vegas delivers. With a population of about 1.4 million people, it's actually a pretty small big city. Its must-sees are so compact, you'll be passing that iconic welcome sign in no time. And then the adventure really starts. Walking the Strip, or Las Vegas Boulevard South, to give it its full title, is the best way to get a sense of the place. It's longer than it looks, and it takes a while to stroll through the traffic, tourists, and occasional casino. But head out in the evening, when the heat's more forgiving, and the sky's taken on a paint box glow and you can wander through Egypt, New York, Paris, and a Tuscan lakeside village without having to pick up your passport. Sure, most visitors stick close to this part of the Strip with its noise, neon, and nocturnal distractions. But to truly appreciate Sin City, you need to explore a little further. Getting around is a cinch, particularly if you rent a car. Valet parking's free, free, and easy across the city, though only if you tip generously. Pick taxis up from hotels and casino entrances they can't collect from the street. So keep a number with you if you're traveling beyond the strip as they may be tricky to come by. If you feel yourself flagging whilst attempting to walk the strip, a handy monorail shuttles the weary four miles from the station at the MGM Grand down to Sahara Avenue near the stratosphere. Trains run every five or six minutes on average. Though the cheapest way to get around is by bus. And the deuce trundles happily up and down Las Vegas Boulevard South, stopping at hotels, shopping areas, and attractions for most of the day. Frequent gridlock ensures any vehicle is likely to travel at a leisurely pace at times. But the deuce is air conditioned and the views from the top deck have got to beat your regular commute, right? With an improbable 40 million visitors passing through Vegas each year, you can see why it needs six of the world's top 10 largest hotels. And with 150,000 hotel rooms and counting, you shouldn't struggle to find a place to lay your head. Flex your money-saving muscles online first, and you could save more than 50% on roommates at top hotels, especially if you're there midweek. For most visitors, the Strip is the only place to stay. And if you want to be in the city's beating heart, the Cosmopolitan could be the one. Voted Gogobot's best hotel in the world, it has three floors of painfully trendy bars, shops, eateries, and entertainment. Yet, it still manages to bring gorgeous young saintsters from around the world together with a local crowd that would previously have steered well clear of the touristy strip. Most of the Cosmopolitan's staggering 2,995 rooms open out onto that Vegas rarity, a terrace, and all are designed with impeccable style to be light, airy, and seriously comfortable. 
The pinnacle of luxury here are the lavish penthouses. Vast spaces immaculately furnished with tailor-made fabrics, sumptuous textures, and extravagant art collections. With views over the Bellagio fountains and butlers to attend to your every whim, there's no real need to leave the suite, let alone the hotel, though the person in charge of your finances might disagree. If the posturing at the Cosmopolitan leaves you feeling a little partied out, head just a few doors down to the Mandarin Oriental stunning 23rd floor sky lobby. You'll be greeted with calming tea and a soothing there there atmosphere. Comprising a mere 392 rooms, this casino-free hotel blends Asian with British-inspired luxury. A serene oasis with direct views of the city's buzzing heartlands, you feel part of the action without being swept along by it. Off the Strip, it's not difficult to find more affordable and, let's say, alternative accommodation. And when I say alternative, I mean the artisan. A mid-range boutique hotel, it shuns the breezy light of its corporate neighbors in favor of a gothic artist's lair vibe. Think the National Portrait Gallery after the Adams Family moves in. With walls covered in reproduction Baroque masterpieces, a spooky wedding chapel, and opulently decorated bedrooms, it would seem improbable that it is, in fact, a former travel lodge in an industrial part of town. Improbable, that is, if we weren't in Las Vegas. Midweek, the Artisan's a unique laid-back retreat with a restaurant, pool, and lounge. But come Friday, the lounge dims its lights, pumps up the volume, and opens its doors for a long weekend of debauchery and excess. If you want a quiet night in at the weekend, don't head to the Artisan. But hey, this is Vegas. Why do you want a quiet night in at all? If it's a taste of old Vegas you're after, right in the heart of hip again downtown is El Cortez Hotel and Casino. Claiming to be Vegas's longest continuously running hotel and casino. The casino is still very much old school, but it's the suites that are really worth checking out. Four were renovated following a design contest for local architects. The winner took inspiration from the hotel's hard-boiled legacy to create the Big Sleep where gold-toothed crocodile skulls on a wall-length mural of the desert, where so many local secrets are buried, blend crime with intrigue. Just across the road, the hotel's little sister, El Cortez Cabana Suites, was once the Ogden House Motel, having been through massive modernization along with the surrounding area. The foyer now has the appearance of a Miami Beach barbershop. Rooms offer incredible value and are clean, comfortable, and stylish if you like green at least. Once you've dropped your bags off and had a spruce up, you'll probably be keen to get out and explore. Now we'd be wasting your time if we told you about the obvious. You're sure to be bombarded with offers to see a show, ride the Manhattan Express, or watch the Bellagio Fountains. And I'm guessing you already know about the gambling. Nothing wrong with that. But we like to do things a little differently at Virgin Atlantic, so here's a few more interesting ideas. Remember when you were a kid and museums were dull as hell? Well, what if your folks suggested one where you could play games all day? The Pinball Hall of Fame is the baby of Tim Arnold, a guy who spent his life building up the world's largest pinball collection. This cavernous space houses over 200 machines from the 50s to the 90s, standing side by side, colorful reminders of more innocent times. If you're in Vegas with the family, it's a refreshing antidote to greed and gambling. While away a pleasant few hours enjoying arcade games that don't feature even a hint of violence. And feel even better knowing the profits go to the Salvation Army. For another feel-good, if slightly eerie, non-profit museum, go where Neon goes to retire. The Neon Museum collects, preserves, studies, and exhibits iconic Las Vegas signs. In the Neon Boneyard, 
150 examples lie scattered, huge pieces that once towered over a now barely recognizable town. The gallery includes the famous rotating high-heeled shoe from the Silver Slipper Casino. Howard Hughes bought it in 1968. Why? Because he had a cabin fevered hunch that there was a camera hidden inside. Every time it paused for a nanosecond opposite his Desert Inn penthouse, it was spying on him for sure. Damn shoe! Book a tour and decide for yourself. To get a vibe for the less fluoro side of Vegas, head to the Mob Museum. For a town undeniably shaped by organized crime, it's a fascinating look at its history from both sides of the law. Housed appropriately in the former federal courthouse, the museum puts you right at the heart of the action with high-tech theater presentations and some interactive jiggery pokery. Just look at this mook thinking he's a wise guy. The museum regularly receives acclaim as a top Vegas attraction. Though, if you're as connected as these fellas, you get all the accolades you want, right? Hey, I'm just breaking your balls. I didn't mean to offend anyone. To round off the offbeat learning, take a trip to the National Atomic Testing Museum. It gives you an insight into the pretty alarming, celebratory attitude to nuclear testing at the Nevada test site back in the day. Hell, a whole tourist industry was built around it, with pinup girls, kids' toys, and even nuclear souvenirs in your morning cereal. An enlightening, frightening visit. It explains how nuclear testing worked and how devastating it was for everything nearby. Hmm, there goes the neighborhood. With a no-wait policy for marriage in Nevada, Vegas has become a mecca for impatient couples. So if you're at a loose end between playing gangster and pinball, why not get hitched? There's a whole heap of heartfelt ways to make your lifelong commitment. On a gondola, atop the Eiffel Tower, hanging out the sunroof of your limousine. But in Vegas, there's really only one way that works. Elvis style, uh-huh. And if you do decide, it's now or never, you'll be in good company at the Graceland Chapel. John Bon Jovi, the Thompson Twins, and Miley Cyrus' dad, Billy Ray, all did the deed, with Elvis karate chopping his way up the aisle and overseeing the nuptials with lips snarling style. If you don't believe there's culture in Vegas, head to the Smith Center, home of the City Philharmonic. The impressive building opened in 2012 and inspired by the Hoover Dam makes a bold statement itself. It hosts dance and Broadway shows that previously bypassed Las Vegas. So if you're tired of tacky, it's worth checking the listings here for something a little more cultured. Now, with a couple of hours to spare, why not live out that lifelong dream of being a T-bird or pink lady? Roll your wheels up to the West Wind and settle in for a movie at the last surviving drive-in in the city. Load up on sugary snacks and take in a classic all-American night out before multiplexes, malls, and Netflix take over for good. When you've cleaned up on the slots and cracked the cards, what do you do with all your stash? Spend it, of course. If mainstream and obvious is your thing, head to the popular fashion show mall or crystals, but rifle through a few more racks and you'll find some stuff that's much less vanilla. Electric Lemonade in the Arts District is where Vegas' most discerning fashionistas get their gear. Sisters Courtney and Kinsey Peters carefully curate new and vintage fashion for ladies from sunglasses and shoes to knickknacks and knickers. Unusual, yes, but reasonably priced and wearable. You might even get to fight Florence in a machine for a batwing dress or something. For a more manly shopping experience, Stitched is the only destination. This is where the sharply dressed gentleman hunts for reassuringly expensive jeans, shoes, neckwear, trilby hats, and scooters. Head to the back and get your shoes shined by Tommy Maynard who played trumpet for Miles Davis and Ray Charles back in the day. His motto is, 
If it don't shine, you don't pay. So it's unclear how he deals with suede. In a bland-looking strip mall is Vegas' oldest comic book shop. There are rare classics, t-shirts, contemporary graphic novels, and $1 bargains. But the main event, row after varied, vibrant row of comics, will excite even the snobbiest of comic book guys. If Vegas has inspired you to take your gambling to a pro level, the Gambler's General Store should be on your list. Situated on Main Street, it stocks a comprehensive range of gambling gifts and souvenirs and all you could ever need to open your own casino, including dice, cards, cloths, cups, chips, 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 visors, money, books, bingo, 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 fobs, tickets, and a handy collection of vintage fruit machines you'll need to get you rolling. If you're ready for a pit stop, swing by the iconic Pepper Mill Restaurant and Fireside Lounge, where hearty breakfast promise to leave you neither hungry nor out of pocket. Made famous by movies like Casino and Showgirls, it's a true old school Las Vegas diner. But don't leave without stopping by its Fireside Lounge for cocktails as impressive as the girls that serve them. Filled with low, cozy, neon-lit booths and anchored at the south end by its famous fire pit, the lounge is definitely not understated. And that's just why people like it. Now, you know those days when only pizza will do? Well, go west to Douay Forney in the upmarket suburb of Summerlin. It's the only restaurant in the country using two specially designed Napolitano brick ovens, Due Forni, to create the perfect crust. And to elevate the humble pizza to even greater heights, they use authentic imported Italian ingredients like buffalo mozzarella. Because a margarita ain't nothing without good mozzarella, right? With a soundtrack of Italian jazz and a glass or two from the extensive wine list, this is one sophisticated way to tuck into your takeout favorite. Okay, now this is food, but it's really a show. Best of both worlds, huh? Head through the glass door at the back of Haleo, and you'll discover a restaurant within a restaurant. A by Jose Andreas is set in a small private room, dominated by a steel top bar with seating for eight set against a dramatic red glass wall with velvet curtain. All part of the chef's concept of cooking as performance. The tasting menu of more than 15 dishes includes almond puree with liquid nitrogen, crispy chicken skin and escabeche, secreto of iberico pork with squid and 25 second biscacho sprinkled with gold dust. And if that hasn't got you intrigued, you must be more of an all you can eat nachos type. If you're after something a little simpler, stage a lovin' at Love It for a tub of frozen custard. This treat's been a longtime favorite in the U.S. of A. ever since Coney Island's Archie and Elton Core added egg yolks to their ice cream in 1919 and found it was smoother and stayed cold longer. Here's a tip. Saddle up for the Divine Love It special. Vanilla custard topped with hot strawberry coulis and salted pecans. It ticks off the four major food groups, you know, sugar, starch, salt, and grease, and almost makes up for the bad spelling. About a three minute walk from the El Cortez Hotel downtown is the oldest freestanding bar in Las Vegas, and it might leave you a little less than freestanding. Founded in 1952, its name came about when customers hung out on the roof, sipping a secret ingredient atomic cocktail and watching blasts from the nearby atomic test site. Makes a change from the football, huh? Atomic has showbiz in its veins. The Rat Pack and the Smothers Brothers drank here after their nightly shows, and Barbara Streisand even had her own seat at the bar. Trip back and always ready for a sing-along, Don't Tell Mama is a downtown piano bar. But mostly, it's a break from the Las Vegas norm. Gambling's been replaced by a few talented staff members, ready to entertain you in a flash. 
a Big Apple import with a big musical heart. How about a bit of art with your al fresco dining? Park is a downtown gastropub where innovative bar fare, mean cocktails, and an eclectic art collection come together in a 5,000 square foot indoor outdoor mashup. So you can cozy up by the fireplace under the stars while you horseback a San Diego burger at your antique table, or ponder some sculpture while sipping a Bloody Mary from the aging greenhouse. Crazy, but cool. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may we introduce Lady Sylvia, your charismatic great aunt, plying you with cocktails and dressed to the nines all hours of the day. Lady Sylvia's a speakeasy style bar with dazzling decor, supposedly inspired by Prague's Strahov Monastery, whilst evoking an English library ambiance. The results may be a bit closer to some private members club in a clockwork orange or a David Lynch film rather than any English library I've been to. Either way, I think happy hour is calling. Back downtown, Insert Coins is a neighborhood casino bar where your poker and blackjack makes way for video games. Whether you get your kicks from old school beat-em-ups like Mortal Kombat 2 or the more realistic Call of Duty Black Ops, Insert Coins is where you go to show the kids who's boss. If Insert Coins is where you go to play, Marquee Nightclub and Day Club is where you go to party. Simple as. The queues are legendary, but with good reason. At more than 62,000 square feet, with 50-foot ceilings, and an unparalleled multi-million dollar soundstage that caters to any performer's whim. This is big, and it attracts equally big live acts that would have seldom touched down in Vegas. Eric Murillo, Benny Benassi, Lord, even Morrissey. Daytime at Marquis is no less huge. Their extravagant pool parties allow gorgeous young rich folk to party for longer with even less clothing. Top international house DJs have thrown shapes for near-naked crowds packed around infinity pools and private bungalow lofts. Hey, you guys seem to be having a lot of fun, but I'm just here to swim some widths in the shallow end if it's all the same to you. Right. Now take a breather. Stretch it out. Vegas doesn't have to be all about the big days and bigger nights, does it? Take a yoga class at the Mandarin Oriental Spacious Studio and rebalance your mind, body, and spirit. Equally worthwhile for the burnt out or the raring to go. If you need a different perspective on Las Vegas, Sara Spa and Hammam is worth taking time out for. It's inspired by the striking contrast of the desert setting, intense daytime skies, sand sculptures, and enchanting moonlit nights. Among the usual treatments, Turkish baths and Arabian beauty rituals evoke other desert cultures. And at the center of the Hammam room, you can bask like a lizard on the giant stone slab they call the Mother Stone. And breathe. Spa's a bit too sedentary for you? How about unwinding with some target practice? Head to Machine Gun Las Vegas and shoot for real what you shoot when you're gaming. The legendary gun girls help you take your pick from the world's most iconic machine guns, handguns, shotguns, and exotic firearms. And if thoughts of the undead keep you awake at night, get involved with the zombie killer package so you'll be ready when they come for you. Vegas is full on, no question. So whether you're OD'd on gambling and girls and buffets and booze, there are plenty of escapes just a hop, skip, and a jump from the strip. If you wondered where the Bellagio Fountain sourced the water for those 15-minute spectaculars, Lake Mead might be the answer. Formed by the Hoover Dam as it blocks the Colorado River, the lake's entirely man-made. And with its barren mountains and canyon tops poking out of the water, it's a serene, if surreal, sight, particularly from above. It's perfect for speedboating, jet skiing, sailing, and even scuba diving. But if all that sounds like too much hard work, 
The Desert Princess paddle steamer effortlessly glides you out to the Hoover Dam and back in 90 minutes while you enjoy brunch or dinner and soak up one of Nevada's most scenic views. Sure, the Hoover Dam is popular and obvious, but it's still an incredible sight, no matter where you see it from, nor how many times you see it. One of the greatest man-made structures on the planet, its brain achingly enormous. And you know what? Without it, the Southwest, much less Vegas, couldn't exist. As it powers electricity and water to 20 million people in Nevada, Arizona, and California. There's loads of great stats like that. So if you're keen, join the tour that takes you inside the dam, which I'm sure inspired Dr. Evil's lair. No need to book, but get there early to avoid the usual big daytime crowds. Whether in town for business, a stag do, or honeymoon, it seems most people come to Vegas for big thrills. And one of the biggest? Sun buggy. <laughs> Just half an hour northeast of the Strip, you'll be hurtling through the desert strapped into a custom-made off-road buggy in a mini Baja chase. Jumping blindly over dunes, negotiating tight valleys, or skidding across the open desert. You'll get why Rolling Stone magazine voted it Sin City's best near-death experience, among many, mainly involving fried food. It's like driving your own roller coaster and leaves you feeling far more alive and less likely to keel over with blocked arteries. If you'd rather take in the desert at a more leisurely pace, join Big Jim and his cowboy trail wranglers in Red Rock Canyon, just a few minutes from the Strip. Mount one of the team's beautiful, well-trained steeds for the Sunset Trail Ride. Then the magnificent miles of trails in this national conservation area are yours for the riding. As dusk falls, the majestic spring mountains seem to glow from within, and the canyon critters come out to play. Keep your eyes peeled for coyotes and bobcats. Back in camp, settle in for the western barbecue under the stars. Round it off with an old-time cowboy sing-along. This is the real Vegas backcountry, and you'll never forget it. So there you have it. Fabulous Las Vegas. A playground for sinners and winners. Constantly evolving, outdoing its own excesses, but staying true to its somewhat demented history. In reality, the town Hunter S. Thompson suggested you experience with narcotics is so hypnotizing even the most heinous of chemicals couldn't match its absurd extravaganza of unrelenting and unapologetic pleasure. So scratch beyond the surface of the Strip and experience Vegas for yourself. We've given you a few ideas to get you started. And now, as the man says, it's your turn to buy the ticket. Take the ride. Thank you.